2018 saw the drought crisis peak, with New South Wales declared 100% drought affected in August. The nation rallied and millions of dollars were pledged from corporates and individuals over a two-week period. Many local groups also collected non-perishables that needed then to be distributed. As a fourth generation showman, Rural Aid's co-founder Tracy Alder is licensed to drive semi-trailers. I walked into my office one day a bit frustrated because all the food was coming in and there were so many drop points and it just meant it was going to be a logistical nightmare. And we had a Woolworths um, specialist in logistics in our office. And after meeting him, I said, oh, I'm really frustrated, I need a truck. And he said, oh, okay, um, what sort of truck? How big do you want it? And I said, I need a big truck. And really that was the end of the conversation. And two days later, he came to me with a photo. How about that truck? Will that Will that do you? So they gave me a big twin steer Pantech to collect the goods. <laughs> so I left Brisbane, I drove down to Newcastle and I did four pickups in the Newcastle area. I went to Coon after that I went to Coonabarabran and dropped a whole lot of goods there. The day after tomorrow I will be in Mudgee where I'll do another hay drop and then I'll drive back to Bathurst and collect some goods and I will drive back to um, the Scone area. I will do a drop of the goods from the Hunter to the Scone area and I'll drive back to Coonabarabran to check up on a few things there and I will then drive back to Brisbane. Over the past two months, Tracy has spent more time in drought-stricken communities than in her own home. Separated from her husband, children and friends, the demanding schedule is taking an emotional toll. Just as it all started to take off the awareness of the drought across the country, um, I, was, I was in the Hunter Valley and it was about quarter to one in the morning I had a phone call from a desperate farmer asking for that help. To me that was really alarming, it was, it was um, again it was an emotional time because if someone's calling you at that hour instantly you think someone's died, it's a natural human reaction. So for this farmer to be calling me at that hour, I, I was beside myself and it left me wondering what position he was in, how desperate he was to be calling me at that hour. I had another gentleman, I just um, heard about him and I went round to visit him at his farm and it just so happened that he was sitting on his veranda. He had his head in his lap holding his hat and you could tell he was quite upset. That was confronting in itself but then to go into his home and hear him talk about his farm, what had been happening. Um, you've really got to take the time with the conversation. It, it leaves you feeling hard pressed to keep your emotion in check. You want to help everyone and you want to help them now, but you just can't always do that. Over the last four years, Rural Aid has managed hay drops through funds raised from Biobal. As demand's grown, hay supplies have fluctuated, and so has the cash flow. In August 2018, Woolworths pledged $2 million to support the campaign and proceeded to collect millions more from customer donations. Rick Sherry was allocated the task of assisting with the logistics of the largest shipment of hay from Western Australia to date, a total of 7,000 tonne. Well, we flew over on Sunday night to, um, to uh, meet up with uh, six truck drivers and 12 trailers to load 240 tonnes of hay to um, bring out to this community. So um, most of the drivers left Western Australia on Monday afternoon and today we're Friday morning and now we're waiting for those vehicles to arrive. Um, 
we're expecting them to um, hit town in the next two to three hours. Well, with Woolworths, it's, Woolworths is obviously a significant logistics operation, um, which is quite programmed, and we do it repetitively over and over again, um, of much the same. So every time we do one of these, it's a different destination, it's a different challenge. So different roads, different permits, um, different legislations, um, and more importantly, it's a lot further distance than most of our drivers is, uh, normally travel. So we've got to be mindful of their safety and make sure that we're working closely with them to, to make sure they arrive safe and deliver the goods to where they need to go and, and coordinate the timing. So once the trucks get there, there's people there to take that, that fodder. Just spent the last three days on the road. And they've been very friendly when I got here and help me unload and they're very happy and I can see their cows jumping around. The first point of making it possible was the community, community donation. I think um, the contribution that they've made through, um, through the Woolworths brand and stores, just their donation, their contribution, has allowed the, the product to be purchased and the transport to be paid for. And without that, it just couldn't happen. We had a shower of rain here the other day, we got about 60 mil over about three weeks. And out of that we had an 8 mil downpour which put the first water in our dams for over 12 months. Been absolutely horrendous. I've lost so six, seven head of cattle, probably about 50 head of sheep that we know of. So this, is a, this hay now is just a godsend. Ambassadors Shezzy and Grant Denyer reached out to Rural Aid in early 2018. They wanted to use their profile to help farmers in drought following the attempted suicide of a family friend. Brett and I spent our eight year wedding anniversary touring around farms in the Upper Hunter, because that was the only time that we had off, um, to see you know, the farmers and, and what they were kind of, what they, they were struggling with on a daily basis then. And that just opened my eyes. It takes a long time for us to get everything organised and get the trucks into the town. It's important to understand that there's a lot of people working behind the scenes constantly uh, to try and make this happen and people need to have a little bit of patience. We have a coordinator in, in the uh, Coonabarramut area and she's been magnificent in that she, she is a farmer herself, she knows the area, she understands the people, she can work with us in a way that actually helps us understand the community better and how we can better help them. It's not always just about how we can help, it's how a community can help themselves. Tracy has now delivered two truckloads of donated goods to a property just outside Coonabarabran. Farming has been the only life Narelle McDonald has known for the past 55 years, continuing her family legacy of 163 years on the property. She's seen the extremes of drought and floods, but says this is the most extensive in over 100 years. We received assistance back in 2014 off Rural Aid Bio Bar. Um, we were in drought then, but it was only little pockets of areas. Now, um, the whole of the Warrenbungle Shire, which is a huge sire, um, they're in drought and every, everybody's dis desperate. Um, and then all the areas around, um, as far to, to my knowledge, to Dubbo, Canamble, Ningan, out to Burke, Cobar, um, they're all in drought. Most of New South Wales is in drought. This farm was five and a half thousand acres and back in 93, unfortunately with the droughts, we started selling. We had two Matilda army tanks. We sold one in 1990 because we were bringing hay, buying hay to bring in. Um, in 1997, I think the bank decided they wanted their money. Um, so we had to sell half of our, half of our property to keep the rest. Many farmers are so resilient they find it difficult to ask for help. So the fact that they'll accept goods delivered to coordinates like Norell speaks for itself. But the local businesses also struggle as rural communities have less to spend. As a history lover, I like to see where our country has come from. And one of the things that I've discovered is that Australia really has been built on the back of farming. You know, at those pioneering people that went out in those harsh, condi harsh conditions, next to nothing out there, and they've built a life, they've built a home, they've built a town. People have got to get out there and have a look. <laughs>